Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge Laddering. We're gonna continue our run through rank 9 up to rank 8 today, so hopefully we'll get to 8 by the end of this, but we'll guess, I guess we'll see you about that. So we're gonna start with a few matches with the Immortal deck we've seen before. I made a few slight adjustments. I removed all geared Immortal since he wasn't really getting me the points I wanted out of him. So uh, let's see how this is gonna work out. And we start up against Nilfgaard, and we get, oh, that is interesting. It's not usually the ability you face, but I uh, guess we'll see about that. So, double Drakkar and a Priest, which is always nice. Um, and the Shield Maiden and the Queen's Guard. So, pretty rounded out deck. So, as you can see, I've added Vildkarl to the deck right now, and I wanted to say Hand that last time. And that's Imperial Formation, so boost an allied unit by two once all charges have been exhausted. Move a soldier unit from your deck to the top. It's actually not, not a bad ability at this point. Let's play Harold first. Like that. But then, I think logically, we get this Fallblood Priest. And then use Harold Hounds now to start hitting it off over here and keep going remove an enemy unit shield so that's gonna kill off harold probably that is fine so let's just use uh the shield maiden in the next turn you know what i might as well put down the queen's card already just to start spending a few of our bronze units that's going on top of that and another tourney joust on the queen's cards I'm fine with that and we get another boost then we get the shield maiden over here which is gonna trigger immediately getting us over and then we can start putting down the armored drakkar right next to the priest I'm assuming he's gonna try and destroy the priest anyway I could also play 12 points that's not a problem maybe I should even do that so if I play Vildkarl and hit him twice I can then do this, there we go, and that gets us over, and then I think if we end it out with Blue Boy Lugals, we get a nice loop going that can still take out most of his cards, well, not take out most of his cards, but have a refresher leader's ability, that's a bit weird I guess, but let's just put Blue Boy Lugals over there, and end it like that, because I can't kill Damien. And then he puts, of course, a soldier up top. Yeah, not a bad move. Not a bad move at all. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna pass. He still has his full ability now. That was a nice play, actually. And Damien, does that count as a soldier? Yeah, he does count as a soldier. That's a really cool Nilfgaardian deck. So I'm five points ahead and they still have a two-point boost, so I definitely lost. Because that's going to be, yeah, Royal Decree. I'm done. I'm done. Destroy an allied unit, their own unit. And they can summon another unit on the field. Ah, oh, of course. Of course. That was a nice final play. I don't know how they press good games so quickly. Probably because the match ended earlier for them. And that brings us right back where we started. So another deck I made a while back is the Swarm Bashing deck. It's an Onslaught deck based on, well, the Great Swords and Dagger 2 Blades, but focused on spreading out the damage as much as possible with a few high level uh, removal, but mostly spreading out the damage to deal with swarms. So I'm gonna try this a few times and see how this is going on. And we face monsters with a bleeding deck, no less. That's gonna be interesting. There we go. Pretty good start, if I say so myself. Uh, and let's start with the Uncrate Longship. And we get three points of bleeding already. And Vigern. Hmm. That's actually really interesting. So that's one point of damage. And then in a minute, I'm going to be able to just destroy it outright. So let's do just that. So one onslaught on Vigern. And then we use Stunning Blow to just take it out. Goodbye. 
and use the tactical advantage on the Uncrate Longship. I'm, I'm just gonna wait. Although four damage is something they can do, so let's just do that. An organic card, so that's probably gonna be... Predatory Dive? No, Parasite. Parasite. So that's Parasite wasted already, basically. Uh, then... Sigvald. Has a bit of a small damage engine. And then I can do use Raiding Fleet to get another boat on there. Although I might just focus on the Uncreate Greatsword and start getting damage out to the other side of the field first. Get that train rolling because I have another Onslaught in the next turn. I'll probably just... No, I, I should probably pause because I feel like with the damage I'm going to take, I'm going to lose out anyway. I'm going to keep my stronger cards for the last round. So that bleeding just causes me to... Still keep one point in advantage there, and since my turn won't trigger if they pass, they are forced to play another card. So they definitely go into Purify and damage an enemy unit by three. Okay. Well, that's enough. It is enough. But remember, they did use their complete leader ability there. I was wondering why the, the vampire and the drones wasn't disappearing there, but there we go. So they start with an Andrea Larva in the next turn. I don't know why exactly. Because, you know, I can just take that out. That's why uh, the Arakas Venom is here. So... You know what? I could actually even just do the Dimon Corsair. Give one of them bleeding. And then hit the other one with Onslaught. So that still keeps one of both of them at three points in the next turn. And maybe they get another friend in a second. So there we go. We lose that advantage since he moves to the back row. But the bleeding is going to kick in and then I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm just going to use the Arakas Venom on that. Let's just uh, give one of them one bit of damage. And then use Jenge to actually give them a lock. And that gives us 6 to 5 with 1 card advantage. Goliath is actually pretty easy to deal with because I can just damage it in the next turn and then destroy it with Vobjorn. So Skellige unit from the graveyard. Yeah, if I use another Corsair, I actually can bleed Goliath. And if they pass now, I mean they should pass now because otherwise they're going to lose out on a lot. Okay, they don't. They don't. I mean, that's fine by me. Your Goliath's gonna take a hit, and then with Vobjorn, I can just destroy it. And that gives us our... One of our units, which is not what I wanted here, but never mind. Let's damage the Toad Prince by one as well. And there we go, we get a pass. So now we have card advantage going into the last round. So definitely get rid of the Butcher, the ship maybe. The ship might actually... Ooh, what is going on? I think... Yeah, okay, we got a forfeit, never mind. I think we're, we were gonna win that anyway. Because we had card advantage and Dogger was in our hands, so... There we go, win. And we get monsters again. This time with a Death Wish deck. Which is fine by me. Should be able to deal with that. I'm gonna keep this sapper because I think, yeah, that which decks usually have some uh, armored units. I don't want to kill too many things here, so I think getting rid of the boat builders and maybe even the stunning blow. Stunning blow is gonna be handy if I do want to take something out, so I think like this is fine. Or do I? I'm gonna get rid of stunning blow. And we get another stunning blow in return. Never mind. Okay, so they start with a Rot Fiend. We can give the Rot Fiend bleeding. And then get uh, the Uncrate Longship. Okay. That's gonna hurt, but never you mind. And then we get Parasites. A bit early to do that. I could technically just wait this out. But you know how I roll. So let's just go... Do I start with a Defender? I think I'm going to start with a Defender. Let's do that. Let's start with a Defender. The Covenant of Steel. So if he gets damaged, 
I'm gonna get um, armor every turn. And we get another Rilt Fiend. I think that's random, right? Yeah. Damage a random enemy unit by four. But we do get the Uncreate Greatsword now. And use the Onslaught on the other Rilt Fiend. Boosting that up to five. And hopefully making him survive. And there we go. One Death Wish tick. And probably a second one. The second one, definitely, because the bleeding is going to kick in. And we're going to lose a few points. Oh, and he consumes them both. Okay. So that's going to be the death of at least one unit. Yeah, okay. Okay. But that gives us an Andrega warrior that's pretty high up there. I could play Morgfark Heart of Terror already, but I feel like we're going to see more of those. Um... So let's just resurrect Freya's... Well, not use Freya's Blessing to resurrect the Uncrate Longship. There we go. We get Karantir. Karantir on what? Oh. Karantir on that. Um, so that's going to seize an enemy unit with four or less power. Four power. I think I should probably... Just use Morgvark now, because Morgvark is going to get the the Greatsword higher. And then that again. That gets us over four points on every one of our units. And now they don't know what to do anymore, because they either pass and I just keep going. Because they still have, of course... Miruna in their hand, because Karanti just made a copy of that. And we get the Barbagazi. I could actually do it ourselves, yeah. That seems like the better option. That seems like the better option. So let's use Marigold Hailstorm to destroy every single unit except for the Barbagazi. There we go. Needed to get rid of that, and I'm still above... 4 power for each of my units, so the Maruna in their hands is useless. I could even do that with the other uh, units in my hand. There we get the pass I was hoping for. Let's pass as well. Because Death Wish, of course, is most effective when you start using it in combination with some other things. Um, so let's use... You know what? No, I don't have my best cards in my hand. So I'm just gonna pass and give me card advantage for the next round. Because that wish is actually in a really interesting place. It does feel very strong. As long as your opponent doesn't know what's going on. If they do, well then you have something else to worry about. I have a few rules. I have the lock here. I think I'm going to get rid of the boat. Surrender is also nice. Although I don't think in this case it will be useful. So let's get rid of surrender as well. And we get another great great sword. Okay, okay, I can deal with that. I can deal with that definitely. I need to get rid of Miruna before we do anything else, because Miruna is going to be really annoying. So, Vran Warrior, whenever a unit is destroyed during your turn, boost himself by one. I could just use Stunning Blow to take it out now, which I probably should, just to get rid of that. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put down the Uncreate Greatsword over there. And start damaging Askel. Still need to be careful about Maruna. I don't know why the sound effect was lingering there, but... It did. It did. Sometimes sounds linger. Just like in real life. We're on a boat nonetheless, so... Don't know how that works with cards, etc. Because... Cards get wet, of course, Imperial Manticore, but that gives us the automatic Death Wish. Which is fine. It is fine. Um, I think it's high time we start setting up the Drakkar then. So the Armored Drakkar first. So that gets destroyed by the Imperial Manticore then, I suppose. Yeah, setting up Barbagazi now is smart. But, I can handle that if I want to. So if I now, hmm, if I now use Onslaught on the Barbagazi, 
We can destroy it with Vobjorn. And deny him the automatic death wishes. And we get the Whispering Hillock. Of course. Alright. Something I did kind of expect there. Then we should play this Fallblood Priest. To start the Priest loop. We probably can still kill... Well, use the Manticore to start taking care of those. I can get rid of Vobjorn, but nothing else. That Maruna is still in his hand as well. So I need to be careful. There we go. I can actually lock it. So if I lock it right now... I want to get rid of it, so let's deploy... Uh, Jenge. And lock him like that. Aha, and there is Vigern. Could destroy him in a... A few ways. But I should probably take care of that as soon as possible. Even though I should set up Sig Vault right now, I'm not going to. I'm just going to use the Arakas Venom to just uh, destroy both of them. There we go. Vigern gone. If there's a living armor, I can take it out with Sapper. Lambert is still 8 points at least. And that's the Detloff. Okay. So the next one is probably going to be... Something to consume that with. Uh, we can actually damage that loss since he's probably going to get destroyed. So he gets less on the consume. So the last one is probably Kron then. Osrel. Okay. Osrel is fine. So he's just going to consume the Vigern. Although that is hefty. Um, so let's damage... Uh, Osral. Then those five points go in here. And then... Can I get my turn? Yeah, he's just showing animations to the other side. Um, Lambert. On Askel. Whatever. Whatever. And whatever. There we go. Won that one as well. That was pretty close. I could have waited to take out the Vigern, but if he used the Consume, then I couldn't destroy the Vigern, so... Felt like I made the right choice there. And then we get Squiatel. And that's, of course, always Mystic Echo, but that is actually pretty good, because I'm perfectly set up to deal with Swarms. So, uh, let's see if that my deck actually works the way it's supposed to work. So there we go, we got the Arakas Venom, which is always good. And the rest is fine by me. Let's just start with the Drakkar. I always like to start with Drakkars because Drakkars allow you to get a Priest Loop going. And we get a start with the Iron Falcon Troubadour. Interesting, let's put the Priest right next to the Drakkar and damage the Troubadour. I uh, could start boosting the Priest, but it's going to make him too big of a target. And then we get Alzu Thunder. okay. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Let's just start with Sigvault then. Sigvault over here and boost Sigvault up to 10. Just makes him a damage engine, which is good for our purposes right now. And I'll play the Greatsword next onto whatever road they're gonna start banging over Gradient Justice on. Oh. So the Sage just got armor, that is interesting. Uh, I am going to actually play the Greatsword on that row as well. Maybe in between here. And then just start damaging... Hmm, I could damage the Iron Falcon Troubadour best, I suppose. Because that actually gets me some damage. Isn't Grim's Council? So he plays a random... Yeah, not really that random, is it? So Falve... Onto, oh, Call of the Forest. That's also not usually, is that playing nature cards? So he chose that, actually. So that's going to be another special card, boosting the Sage. But I mean, you're going overboard a bit. Um, and I can't purify... <laughs> well then, 
I'm gonna start with surrender. Surrender over there. That takes care of the dwarves. And now we can just start dealing damage to Figgis Merluza over there. And next turn he won't have a defender anymore. There we go. Goodbye. Oh, I love my anti-swarm deck right now. So next up is at least gonna be a, Nova, a double Novagradian Justice. But I can even deal with that. So let's just keep Dogur where he needs to be. Kremis might be useless at this point. Um, let's get rid of the boat builders. Fabjorn is cool. Stunning Blow is cool. I think I'm just going to keep all of this. So let's stay at that. Um, I'm going to pass to get us back to equal cards. Uh, and we'll see about the rest later. So, final round. I do want to get Lambert, if I can. Because Lambert, of course, means lots and lots of goodies. So, maybe get rid of boat builders. Oh, Demon Light Longship is also nice. You can use a Stunning Blow to get rid of something really quickly. But I think the Demon Corsair is actually better. So, let's get rid of the Longship and we get Raiding Fleet. Gets us any kind of ship. And then, uh, do we get rid of Stunning Blow? No, I'm gonna get rid of Gramis. And we get Marigold's Hailstorm. Just as fine. Just as fine. Just as fine. If I can set up the Defender. Spawn three Rowdy Dwarves in an allied row. I don't have... Yeah, I don't have Lambert, sadly. But I can put down the Defender. And start... Do I damage? No, I'm not going to damage just yet. If he turns them into the Barricade dudes... Uh, I don't know what they're called. The Marauders, Berserkers? Yeah, Berserkers, so that. Um, it is what it is. So they're just going to trigger my armor now. If I use the Demon Corsair now... I can select one to start bleeding. And then use the damage on Munro Broys. Or however you need to pronounce that. And there we have that. So Covenant of Steel is going to get armor constantly. And there we go. Novigradian Justice. Is that going to be onto Barricade Dudes? Yeah. The Berserkers. That is annoying. And um, play it again. Six of them. Six of them. That is nasty. So that's six of those. Where's Lambert when you need him? Um, I'm gonna take out one of those with Stunning Blow. I'm just gonna stay like this. Yeah, just take out one of them with Stunning Blow. Like that. And just slowly make our way through all of this. We have a lot of special cards. So special cards means that he won't have any more targets after this. Because... Four ticks of damage means, well, we can't really do anything with that. So that's good on him. Let's use Raiding Fleet on the center Berserker here. And yeah, that one is definitely dead. And I get one more hit in on that Berserker. Purify an allied unit and boost it by three. God motherfucking damn it. So that means with Triss, with Marigold's Hailstorm, I can actually take out most of these now. Or I can just use Arakas Venom. So Arakas Venom onto this guy. Gets us rid of most of that armor. They're gonna trigger again at the end of his turn and I can take out most of the rest of the armor in the next turn. Great Oak boosting himself. There we go. We get two more damage ticks. I can use Vobjorn to get rid of the Oak. So Bloodthirst 1 is locking. So if I just lock one of them and then get rid of that of the Great Oaks. Teensy bit of stuff over there. I'm far behind, but I feel like I'm, I can try to get this back. I'm assuming there's gonna, gonna be two more poison units at the end of it. Biting Frost, Impenetrable Fog, or Torrential Rain. 
Damage the highest unit on this row by two. Okay, so Dagur is fine, but I need to... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to play Marigold now. Get rid of most of his units. Uh, like this. Um, yes, and... Avalach then for the damage. Yeah, there we go. Now we get Alzu Stunder. We get one tick onto the Great Oak. And play uh, Vabjorn. To kill the Great Oak. And then we get Surrender. Not sure whether I'll be able to survive this, but... Because of course my last one is Dagur. Yeah, I need to play Dagur now. Onto that row, because I don't have another choice. And then two damage is enough to take that out. Boost self by 12. Oh. Oh. Well, thanks. So now I can play Morgvark Heart of Terror. Onto Harold. And that keeps going. And that gets us over. Wow. Didn't think I was going to win that, but uh, Harold, what's his name called? I think it's Harold, right? Harold Gold. That was nice. That was nice. Thank you for that. Holy crap. So one more win and we're on to rank eight. Took me a while to find a match there, but we get another score. Tell Mystic Echo. So I'm uh, hoping uh, the previous scenario plays out again. So uh, definitely going for that swarm bashing right now. There we go, we get a really good hand for that. So we got both Lambert and the Covenant of Steel. So, uh, and Surrender even. So that's a lot of uh, Swarm counters right there. So we start with Figgis Merluzo with Defender. So that's good. Because that means I can start putting down an upgrade Greatsword over there. Although I might want to... Wait with that and start with the Dimmon Light Longship. Getting rid of both of the armor ticks of figures. Although, I mean, I could have taken that away with uh, some surrender as well. Okay. Connection issues. And then we get a Sage. But, Uncreate Greatswords. We might get also Stunderts. We might get also Stunderts. So he's deciding, is he gonna go for Mystic for Novigrad Justice already? No, nature card again. Pretty much the same thing as before. Call of the Forest. Which causes the, okay, and we get, so that's the Berserker Changer, right? That is such bullshit. So I'll probably just remove the armor now, because I still feel like I can, you know, I have a shot at this. So damage figures Meluzo twice. And then we can use Surrender to get rid of the armor of the Berserkers and get two more damage ticks. There we go. Three Rowdy Dwarves. Well then. I mean, I should probably take care of that, right? So let's just damage figures Meluzo once. And then use the heal storm to get rid of that, 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 and that. Goodbye. And we get a pass on six. Which is fine. Um, I can just hit... Hmm. Yeah, I could just hit uh, Figgis over here. Do need to be careful that I don't overplay this now. Then Onslaught. On one of the Berserkers. Which only gives, needs me... Yeah, I'm just going to use Changi now. So that's six points. And look, whatever. There we go. Now, I'm not going to pass. Because I feel like they're going to do try and do the same thing again with the Berserker stuff. And I don't want that to happen. So... Definitely keep the armor Trekkar and Freya's Blessing. I'm gonna get rid of the Purifying. 
And raiding fleet might actually be very handy as well, so... Yeah, that seems about right. No need for anything fancy just yet, so let's just... We could get rid of Sigvald or Vabjorn. No, no, this is fine. This is fine. I keep telling myself this is fine, so it should be fine, right? There we go. I'm gonna start... Yeah, let's start bleeding the Iron Falcon Troubadour and put down the... Uh, ooh, connection lost again. The Longship and then damage the Iron Falcon Troubadour again. A lot of connection issues with this man or woman, Trees Lever. Seems like there should be a foul in between there, but Trees Lover. Oh, Trees Lover, I got it. I got it. Don't think that's proper English, but Trees Lover. Every ally turn on turn and damage it. Well, I can deal with that technically. So let's get Sigvald down. Lock and reset that unit. No biggie, I suppose. Let's put the defender down. And damage the Mahakam defender with one. Ow, ow, ow. My cat just attacked me. Thank you. So Dennis Cranmer. Okay. So that means I should probably just resurrect the greatsword, right? Yeah, let's just resurrect the greatsword. Because the Troubadour is going to be gone. Dennis is hopefully not going to get boosted again. Because then I can use Arakas Venom to whatever goes next to that. Opponent is deciding. Is he going to go with... There we go. Mystic Echo. Call of Nature. Call of the Forest. Call, Call of Nature is something else. I think that's if you want to go pee. Okay. Interesting. And then Great Oak is gonna take out... No, he's not. He's most definitely not gonna take anything out there. Um, before I lose the opportunity, let's put Lambert over here. And damage those guys, and then damage the Mahakam Defender again. And that gets us double the points, and his Mystic Echo is gone. I must re-examine the manuscript. Then Vabjorn is gonna get whacked. Well, it's gonna whack that great oak in the face. There we go. And then the last turn I'm gonna damage the Mahakam Defender by one and use Arakas Venom in the middle there. Yep. Go for it, buddy. Go for it, buddy. Let's just get rid of the Defender. And use Arakas Venom. Blammo! Let me see you get out of that one. That was with card deficit. We had card de disadvantage there and we still, I think, won. Yep, that's not gonna help you much. Because if he hits my armor again, because he did actually hit my armor last time. No. No. I don't see you getting 28 points, well, 27 points with that one. Random Dwarf Dryad and Al from your deck. There we go. There we go. Ooh, I love that swarm bashing deck. And that gets us up to GG. Don't forget the GG. Always GG, people. That gets us up to a rank 8. There we go. All right. So Skellige is definitely still good. I did my daily quest. I'm just going to show you the deck composition again so you can try this out for yourself. So Swarm Bashing definitely hasn't stolen its name. It uh, definitely worked out very well in those last two matches. So we use Onslaught. And then the cards are Marigold's Hailstorm, Morgvark, Heart of Terror, Dargor Two Blades, Covenant of Steel, Lambert Swordmaster, who for some reason looks like Morgvark, Morgvark at the moment, Vabjorn, Surrender, Sigvald, Raiding Fleet, Jengi Fret, Gremist, Arakas Venom, Freya's Blessing, Double Ancrate Greatsword, Demon Light Longship, Uncrate Longship, The Sapper, Boat Builders, Armored Drakkar, Demon Corsair, Svalbard Priest, Double Stunning Blow, and Asphaltblood. Butcher. So the Butcher uh, goes on to the Armored Drakkar, same with the Priest. Uh, so those are just my basic bronze combos and everything else you saw in action, I think. You could swap out Gramis with something else for those seven provisions, because uh, Purify is really situational. If you need it, it's really handy that we have it. 
just for getting rid of a defender status or something like that. But as you saw in the previous rounds, we have enough damage potential to just take out defenders the normal way. So uh, that's the Swarm Bashing deck. And with that, we successfully moved over into rank 8 using only Skellige decks. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Grand Edge, don't forget to like this video right here on YouTube. And uh, if you have any comments or feedback on the decks that we're using, don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below as well. So thank you guys enormously for any feedback and for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye!